project manager at Open Architecture Toronto and for our Toronto chapter. And I'm here with our chapter's executive director, Shanna. And we're going to introduce Open Architecture to you guys, hopefully gain some traction, get more awareness out about us, and hopefully get some new members as well, which should be fun. Uh, we also have some members in attendance today. I'm going to get them to hand around some sheets right now, and we're going to use them later on in the presentation for a quick activity. Um, at our core, Open Architecture is a global learning network with chapters all around the world, and we want to create a dialogue between professionals, students, the community, the public, when it comes to urban development, and how we can ensure everyone benefits from the built environment. Previously, our organization was called Architecture for Humanity, which was up and running between 1999 and 2015. You may have heard of that and what they used to do. And in 2016, there's a rebranding, so now we're called the Open Architecture Collaborative. We have about 22 chapters, which are around the world, as you can see on the map. And our Toronto chapter began as Open Architecture, sorry, Architecture for Humanity in 2003. But after our rebranding, we now have a new internal structure and a new set of goals as well. Therefore, we're still in the process of expanding our group and our reach. Our mission is to promote community awareness first and foremost. We want to bring together like-minded individuals and local organizations to ensure that we create long-lasting and sustainable solutions that meet the needs of our communities. We look to deliver these solutions by connecting with our stakeholders' identities, values, and desires, and incorporate them in innovative and socially responsible design. To achieve this, we engage in a very specific process. We discuss the issues, assess possible solutions, deliver the project, and then we want to make sure we re-engage with the community to make sure we get feedback, to make sure it's working for them, and to continue uh, maintaining those relationships so we can hopefully use them in the future as well. We work to support small businesses, promote urban art agriculture, design a better education system, raise up youth, demand equitable property ownership, and stand with our immigrant communities. Open Architecture's values are sixfold. Commitment, sustainability, excellence, integration, trust, and participation. I don't want to read through all of them, as you can see them up on the slide, but I'll just go through a couple. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> um, participation is really, really key to what we do, as I'm sure you guys know from Civic Tech as well. Our internal volunteers are very important when planning events or engaging with potential partners. But volunteers who show up to monthly meetings or who are completely external to us but contact us for a specific reason are really integral to how we work. We can only generate so many ideas, have so many contacts, be aware of so many issues. But when the public gets involved or other organizations or other individuals come to us and say, come to us and say sorry, this is what's going on in my community, this is what I see happening in the city, I feel like we can do something together, I want to collaborate, that's what kind of <coughs> opportunities we want to have with open architecture. So we can step in and say, we have a group of expertise, experts, and they have all these kinds of expertise, and so they can help provide a solution that really works for everybody. Integration in a similar vein is really important to how we work. We want to be able to integrate communities, individuals, professionals, students, all different kinds of people, and make sure that we're all being respectful to all kinds of perspectives, all backgrounds, all contacts, everything, to make sure the solutions that we create benefit the people involved in making that solution and the stakeholders that are also involved. Similarly, the goals of our Creator Open Architecture organization reflect that of our chapter. In the rebranding process, our directors wanted to focus on three key values, being open, ensuring participation, and establishing trust. These values are important not only to interact with external stakeholders, but internally as well, as they act like a code for our members to make sure that we're cohesive, productive, respectful of all perspectives, contexts, and backgrounds. And I'm just going to hand it over to Shannon. Branding, what OAC is looking at now is slow disasters, and these 
to disasters that um, overall that we found that are um, systematic issues within our community. And these are housing affordable crisis, homelessness, unjust public space transit system, um, displacement, gentrification, and lack of um, access to public spaces. Um, last week, uh, last our last meeting, what we did was to brainstorm and like um, transit system and the the, the safety with community commuters within um, when we exit and and transit on to the um, to street cart and ideas on how to make that space safe with the commuters and also even just in general, like even pop, like aesthetically um, presentable, right? So uh, right now, um, yeah, and these are some of our meetings that we have on a monthly basis where we talk about issues that, uh, uh, that are uh, systematic within our communities. Um, right now we hand out some sheets that, um, or some sheets there, so, sorry. <laughs> Right now, we just had some sheets. So, what are some of the issues that you found that are systematic um, within our city, or experience that is that you have um, found that systematic that's occurring in our city? So, if you could take like three minutes to write them down, and at the end of our presentation, we we'll, like talk about a few of them, and we'll collect them.
innovation. So um, kind of like understanding what our stakeholder needs and providing that for them, and also that will also benefit the surrounding community as well. Um, we're looking into long-term relationship, by, which is um, community, not community housing, like homelessness and um, affordable housing, and partner, partnering with Habitat for Humanity is one of our strategies as well, so um, that is covered with our long-term relationship strategy. And community awareness is um, basically collecting data with uh, collecting data from different communities within Toronto and implementing them into OAC, where we are providing a, a complete project. That means it being a lecture series, a workshop, or a design build um, product at the end, and reintroducing that into the community where the community is benefiting. So instead of like the project coming to us, we are actually building the project and providing projects that um, are systematically and solving those issues within the community. Um, next is training, and we're looking at like, re-educating the public, um, students and professionals about um, social design and social justice through uh, training um, or monthly informal meetings and workshops and networking as well. Uh, the last is partnership. And with partnership, we're looking at developing long-term relationships that not only benefit our volunteers, but also benefit in, um, our community as well. And uh, partnership through maybe with the government or a school or other nonprofit organization or community groups. Okay, so current projects, as I mentioned before, this is a church project, it's about 15,000 square foot and it's completely interior renovation. Uh, what we're doing right now, there is a team that is working with the stakeholder and we're coming up right now where we're gonna have to do a presentation. So right now we are in the schematic or conceptual phase of the project. Next is um, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, there's another project coming up where we will be going on site to actually help build um, uh, homes for affordable homes for our community. And another thing that we are also looking into is to come up with a co-op program with um, Habitat for Humanity. And the co-op program is basically will be design based where um, designers or to help designers basically get working experience, especially those who are newcomers into the country that are architects or you know interior designers and they don't have working experience to naturally integrate into the community. So providing that co-op experience will actually help them. Um, the next one is actually an international project and it's located in Gambia, Africa. So Gambia, Africa, um, Grace Foundation came to us and they were looking for funds or food to help feed, continue their program to help feed um, students um, within their, their school so they don't have to drop out to go and beg or look for um, money or food or to even help their, their family provide um, food for them. So we are not um, a fund-based organization, we're architectural. So we, instead of like saying, no, we can't help you, we look into another way of helping them and we provide, right now we're providing um, a graphic or like rebranding with graphic and web presence for them. Um, we also come up with an initiative to create like a community or school garden where you could actually educate the students about agriculture. Um, it will also provide some sort of food, income, food for them as well. And also if extra produce are available, they could also sell it to the community to create income. Um, another one is to uh, it'll actually stand as a middleman for them where we're looking, continually looking for um, providers that will, or other organization that will actually help their needs. Okay, so our motto is social design for social justice and what that means is that we want to be able to use our skills and our ability to not only create beautiful and aesthetic design but actually um, create one that are socially responsible within our community. So uh, th this is complete our end of our presentation and you can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook and our email address is at Toronto at Open Park Collaborative at org and 
There are actually some positions available right now if you're interested. There is a communication director position, uh, communication assistant position, and also outreach and engagement position. So if you're interested in coming a part of OAC, those are available for you. And right now we're gonna take up a few of your um, your answers to discuss. So Anyone want to jump up? <laughs> so, as I understood the question, and I could be wrong here, um, we were to list three uh, specific problems that we encounter as residents of Toronto. And I list, listed three, and I took the liberty of, of listing a couple of solutions that friends of mine have come up with as well. The first is structures promoting violence, things like booze cans, concentrations of bars and other entertainment centers with no safe spaces or community space available. Um, one of the uh, initiatives in Kensington Market to do that has been to create a, a uh, safe space, an all-night drop in, in uh, St. Stephen's Church um, between 9 o'clock at night on Friday and uh, 7 o'clock in the morning on Saturday so that people who are concerned about their safety can, can have a place, a non-threatening place to go where there's nothing stronger than coffee. Uh, gentrification and displacement, the lack of affordable housing, uh, the solutions that I've put down here are land trusts, co-ops, community housing, and again, the, the Kensington uh, Market Association has a project to document the entire market, who lives where, who owns what, so we can keep track of, of where people live, who owns the places they live, and what is being, what, what moves are being taken to uh, change the character of the market and what those moves will actually mean in terms of people's housing and housing security. The third one is how homelessness, lack of stable housing, lack of support for vulnerable populations. And again, here the, the solution is to provide is, is um, in a, innovative uh, group living arrangements. That, that's just my opinion about it. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> awesome. that you were mentioning regarding the church or, or other, uh, uh, you know, when you meet with other stakeholders, how do you validate their concerns, right? Um, how do you, do you, do you do anything outside of just understanding their concerns to, to work on them, or do you, do you do anything outside of that? Well, we collect data from the community, right? And like, what, how do we kind of like engage the community to come in and like, um, so engage the community to come in to like put their information and what they need within, with, to add to the project. So um, even right now, we're gonna be doing a presentation and within the presentation is like, it's a two way, right? So you tell me what you want and we'll give you suggestions to solve these issues that you're, 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 um, you're finding within your, in your, um, community or within the church. So it's always going to be a two-way thing. It's not just us designing a space. Any other? Uh, yeah. So you've, you've seen an issue, you, you've worked on it, you've come up with a solution. Let's say it's community-wide, city-wide. What do you do then? How do you take that solution who you present it to, how you get City Hall to act on your solution? So, um, <coughs> right, that's a good question. Well, 
the idea is to, whenever we're coming up with a workshop or a lecture, to actually invite other community groups that have similar interests with, with whatever we're trying to solve. So if we're not able to complete the solution, maybe one of these community groups would be able to take up that and continue with it, or partner with us to continue with the solution at all. Consultation as to accessibility. We have not. <laughs> yes. But that is a consideration, yes, because we are still in the rebranding stage and restructuring stage, right? So um, our strategy might change depending on what works for us and, and what doesn't. Thank you. Thank you very much. Round of applause, please. Thank you.